Hey guys, uh, today we are going to do the class called the Circle of Grace. Um, this is a required from the Diocese of Baton Rouge that every child enrolled in um, PSR, Parish School of Religion, or in Catholic schools get this training. So this is for the fifth and sixth grade. Um, and so we'll be going over the Circle of Grace and what the media and how the media can influence that. So before I get started, let me go ahead and share my screen with you so that we can get this PowerPoint going. And let me go here and do this slideshow. So let me present this. Okay. So what is a circle of grace? So I've got this, this graphic up here, if it'll load. Wait for a second so it can load up here. And um, all right, is it going to load? It's saying that it's still loading. Okay, that's taken a minute. Not sure why it is not loading. Hmm. Let me try again. Let me try this again. All right, so let me present this. See if it will load now. Okay, there we are. Okay, so you see this little graphic here. Um, it's called the Circle of Grace. In the younger grades, um, some of the little kids, we uh, help them stand up and put their arms out and up in front and reach down and all the way to the ground to kind of draw this circle of grace. And what this is, is just a, a visualization of kind of like your personal space, right? And that like the space all around you that God is present there. And so in this graphic, you see, you know, circle of grace is written in red um, and red is the color of the Holy Spirit. And so you see the Holy Spirit here in this graphic like a dove. And so in the scriptures, the Holy Spirit is um, either seen as a dove or as fire. And so when Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit came upon him in the form of a dove and the Father's voice was heard, you know, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And when we get baptized, it, that the same thing happens. The Spirit comes into us and God says from heaven, this is my beloved child with whom I am well pleased. And so in our circle of grace is in us and all around us, like a large circle where God is present. That means that he wants a relationship with us. It's not like he's just watching us to see what we're going to do or wait till we mess up. God wants a relationship with us. He wants us to know him as intimately as he knows us. He knows what we think before we say what we're going to say. He knows exactly what we're going to say. He has every hairs of our head counted and he even counts our tears. So he even knows when we're sad. He knows us intimately all the way. Like there's nothing that he actually knows us better than we know ourselves. And because he is present to us in us, um, and all around us. He wants us to know him as, as well as we know, as he knows us. So the circle of grace training is, is part of it is just for us to recognize that we are always in God's presence. We cannot go anywhere where God is not. And that the Holy Spirit as Christians, the Holy Spirit lives inside of us and God resides there in his spirit. So let's go ahead and open with a word of prayer before we start uh, the full lesson. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Holy Spirit, show us the way. Be with us in all we think, do, and say, amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, so we went over what is the circle of grace, and it's just knowing that the Holy Spirit lives in us as baptized children of God and members of his church, and that the Holy Spirit is all around us all the time. And if you, you know, like make that circle with your arms and draw it all the way to the ground, it's like a very visual image of that. So here we are in the center of that, um, that presence, which is God, and then the blue in the background is the world in which we live. And so we know that there is nowhere that we can go where God is not. And so it's a really important thing for us to understand and to recognize that God is everywhere all at the same time. And that's a big word called omnipresent. And so he is present everywhere all at the same time. And only God can do that. So as you're getting older, 
we try to understand what things can influence our circle of grace, right? What things are, are things that we should allow into the circle of grace and what things we should keep on the outside of that circle of grace. And so, and then the older that we get, the more we recognize other people and we see the beauty and the goodness of the other person. And so if that's something, if there's something that we want to keep outside of our circle of grace, then we want to love someone else and not put that same thing in their circle of grace, right? If I, if I don't want it in mine, I shouldn't want it in someone else's circle of grace. And all kinds of things can influence us when it comes to that. So, of course, you guys are old enough to know that, you know, we don't want to, you know, allow people that are lying or hurting us in our circle. And so we don't want to be those kinds of people either. Somebody who lies or is, is, is mean to someone, you know, we don't want to do that because that's trying to put, you know, some bad thing in their circle of grace. So the people that are around us and the things that we encounter influence our circle of grace and can get into the circle of grace. And we don't even realize um, how it is uh, affecting us in a negative way or in a positive way. So let's talk about media really quickly. Let's talk about types of media. So you guys are all very familiar with cell phones um, and ways that we connect with the outside world. And so you've got the internet, you have social media, you've got ideas and music and instant messaging and all kinds of things that, and ways that you connect outside of yourself through your phone. And so this can be a good thing, but it also can be something that's a little bit not so good, especially, especially if we are not thinking about what we're watching and what we're listening to and what we're looking at. So if we're not actually thinking about that and we just look at it and allow it to come into us, we can be like this guy, right? Where the media influence is just spoon feeding us about the things that we should think, uh, the things that we should you know, uh, participate in and what's cool and what's not cool, what's popular and what's not popular. So it's important for us to really think about the things that we watch and the things that we allow into our mind through our eyes, through the media that we have. So what kinds of media is there, right? And so if I was in a class with you, we would actually do this on a board, but since I'm not, I'm over here, I've just got some, I'm gonna, you know, ask you some questions and maybe the answer that you have is actually not on here, but you can talk to your mom or dad about the types of media that we have access to. So of course we all know that we have television, but the difference about television now is that you guys have television, but you also have streaming devices. Like when I was a kid, all we had was, um, you know, the local news channels, like the local stations like PBS and NBC and ABC. And then as I got a little older, we had cable, right? And that's when the Disney Channel came out and HBO and Cinemax and all these really cool movie channels that you could get more stuff than just on the regular TV. Well, now we have smart TVs that can access YouTube and Netflix and you can, you know, get on Twitter or Instagram or, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you can connect to the internet, your, 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 your television can also connect to that. So the, the television media um, opportunities are like, poof. whereas when television first started, you had like four or five, you know, things that you might be able to access. Then as time went on, you've had you know, maybe a couple of hundred, and now, I mean, it's as, as vast as the internet. So the television is one of those ways that media can influence us, as, and, and it can be as um, accessible as your phone, even, uh, on the television. This is kind of an old school form of media, but it is a type of media. This is a newspaper. My husband likes to say that we should go back to the newspaper. It's a tangible thing. Like you actually hold on to this paper and you can put it down a lot easier than your phone. Uh, but articles, you know, the local, there'd be a local paper, you know, there's the New York Times, which is a, is a local paper, but a lot of people still receive it all over the country and even all over the world. So newspaper that has, you know, articles on it and the weather and those kinds of things, right? So then we have all these other apps that are available now through television and on our phone. And of course, we can access all of this stuff just from a personal computer, like your Chromebooks that you have for school right now. So um, Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, although Snapchat is more of a phone based thing because um, you're, you know, you're snapping people to their phones. Although I'm sure that you can get some things on, on a computer and on the television as well. Pinterest, you know, all those things that we can access now with our phones and our um, and any device that connects to the Internet. 
And then of course, media is also music that we listen to. And there's lots of apps that you can use to access different kinds of music. Spotify is one that my family uses. And then you've got Apple Music and those kinds of things. So what is the purpose though of all this stuff that we can access? Why do we want to, right? So there's a purpose for that. And the purpose of media is this, it's to educate, communicate, inform, entertain, and advertise. So that the types of media that we've talked about, and there are lots more, I'm sure you can think of other ones that aren't on this list, but the purpose of all these things are to educate, communicate, inform, entertain, and advertise. Maybe all at the same time, maybe one more so than the other, like the History Channel, that's gonna be more educational. Um, social media is more to communicate, right? Um, news outlets like, you know, the new different CNN and Fox News and, you know, One News Network, all those news, those are for information. And then, of course, YouTube can be for all of those things, right? Like I learned, you know, makeup tips and fashion tips on YouTube. That's educational, right? It's important stuff, right, ladies? But you can also learn how to, uh, like, make a, a, a rocket out of a paper mat, right? I mean, there's so many things that you can learn on YouTube. So it's entertaining, but it's also educational as well. Now, advertising is huge. I think that a lot of times, even I forget that a lot of the purpose of media is to advertise. How irritating it is now that on YouTube, almost every single video that you, you know, access has some kind of advertisement. Sometimes you can skip the advertisement, and sometimes you can't. And so that's really irritating, uh, but that is a really big part of the media is to try to get you to buy something. And so when we're looking at media and how that influences our circle of grace, we have to look at what is it that we're looking at, first of all, and what is the intention of it here, right? So is this educational? Is it a communication? Is it information, entertainment? Or, or are they trying to sell me something and get my money? Okay, so... There are kinds of media that can help us to obey the Ten Commandments, and then there are other kinds that really encourage disobedience to the Ten Commandments. So let's, I'm going to put up some scenarios, and let's talk about whether that type of scenario would help us obey the commandments or not. Now remember the Ten Commandments are like these ten rules for a happy living, right? So God is not like ready for us to just sort of, you know, disobey so he can reprimand us that is not who god is and not how he sees that when we when he gives us rules to live by he is telling us how to be happy so the ten commandments another way to look at the ten commandments is that god has a as a character like how who he is on the inside right his heart who who is god how is god really and a lot of times our idea of god is actually not the reality of who God is. And so when we look at the Ten Commandments, another way to look at the commandments is that the Ten Commandments is God's character in action. This is who God is in action. And so when God tells us, you know, not to lie, then that is telling us that God himself is truth, right? He's not going to tell us something that's not true. He, when he promises something, it's going to happen. Thousands of years of, of salvation history teach us that when God says, I promise that he's going to come through on that. Uh, and every promise of God has been fulfilled. Um, you know, there's some that are not fulfilled yet. What God, pro Jesus promises that he will come back again. And so we can look at the history and God's promises have been kept. And so the ones that haven't happened yet, we can in faith and in trust know that God will come through on his promises. Why? Because he always has. He always has. When you think about trusting someone, trust is something that has to be earned. Uh, and so somebody is trustworthy whenever they tell you that they're going to do something and then they do it. Or when they tell you that they love you or that they're your friend and then their actions show that, that they actually do in practice love you and they are a good friend to you by wanting to be around you, by playing with you or, you know, sticking up for you whenever somebody else is being, you know, mean or something at school. So people show themselves to be trustworthy by their actions and God is no different.
God promised the Israelites in Egypt when they were slaves that he would set them free, and he did. God promised that they would have um, a country that was given to them, and he gave them Israel. God promised that he would send a Messiah, and he sent us Jesus. The very first promises of Jesus were thousands and thousands of years before he even came. And so we know that God has a really good track record, right? And so we can trust him. So when it comes to the Ten Commandments, we can trust that by following following the Ten Commandments, it's not that God's waiting for us to mess up. On the contrary, God knows that in following the Ten Commandments that we will be happy, that it's the re that's like the recipe or the directions for a happy life. And so when we encounter stuff in the world, especially in the media, it can either help us to obey those commandments and, and live the life that God knows is going to make us the happiest and the most fulfilled, or it can lead us in the wrong path. And so here's a scenario. The first one is this. You're watching a show where someone is violent against another person. So there's a murder or somebody's hitting someone or, you know, my goodness, shooting someone. So what would that like help you on the path to follow the commandments or to not? Now, when I ask my kids this, they get really irritated and they're like, Mama, just because I see something on TV doesn't mean I'm going to go mow down somebody with a gun. And, and they're right. But when we see violence after violence after violence over and over again, we can become desensitized to that kind of violence. And so when we're watching something where somebody's getting hurt, um, and, and like America's Funniest Videos, I don't know if y'all still watch that or not, but we do sometimes. When, like I find myself sometimes laughing when somebody gets hurt. And then I thought about that and I was like, even though it's funny to like watch somebody slip on the ice or something, that can actually really, really hurt them. Or when somebody's riding along on a bicycle and they like crash into something, right? It, it, we want to laugh and, and sometimes, it, but really, I mean, what if they got hurt, you know? And so that's an example that I use of desensitization against violence. Like we want to love people. We don't want people to be hurt. I don't want to take, take um, happiness in somebody else's pain. That is not a loving a response to someone whenever you know they've slipped now if they've slipped and they're fine or they ran into that tree and they're fine then it might be okay to laugh be like that was really funny i'm so glad that you're fine but you know that that was funny and now that i know that you're fine we can all laugh together right okay what about watching a TikTok where somebody's making fun of somebody else man this happens all the time on TikTok, right where somebody's like we get it you're a dork or whatever and is that going to help us obey the commandments or is it going to lead us to a path of disobedience? I mean, you guys know the answer to this, right? You're old enough to know, and that's probably not the best thing to, to be watching. What about a TikTok where somebody is helping some, somebody else or showing something beautiful? I've seen TikToks where um, they talk about sunsets and beautiful, um, you know, uh, landscapes or um, where they talk about, you know, moms and, and the love between a mom and a child. And it's really, it's a good thing, right? So TikTok can be used in a good way that uh, influence us for, for beauty and for good and for truth. So I'm not saying that, you know, all media is bad. It can be, it just depends on the way that it's used, right? What about somebody who sends you a snap showing an image that makes you feel uncomfortable? Yeah, so this is going to, you know, lead us in the direction where we disobey the Ten Commandments. Maybe we might want to, you know, send a snap back, something equally inappropriate, or it makes us feel uncomfortable to the fact that, you know, then we have to decide what we're going to do with that. Are we going to talk to our parent or are we not? Gosh, if I tell my mom this, she'll never let me get online ever again, right? So it's like you want to keep that secret so that you can still, you know, get online or um, you can still uh, use Snapchat or whatnot. So sometimes we're afraid to tell somebody because we're afraid of what the consequences might be. And we don't want to lose our ability to connect with people and things like that. What about this one? You see something on Pinterest that inspires you to create something new. That's a beautiful thing. My daughter loves Pinterest and she gets all kinds of ideas. And when slime was a big thing a few years ago, like she would watch these slime videos and she would get really inspired to go make some. And there, and that was fun. We, that was something we did together. Sometimes she just did it on her own. And, um, and so that can, you know, that can lead you to, you know, it's like, it's, that's not a bad thing. Okay. So the point that I'm making about media is that it can be used for good and it can be used for ill. When someone is trying to get you to buy something or when someone is trying to influence your opinion, it's important for us to really think about the purpose of what it is that we're watching, right? And so if we come away with after watching something 
angry and upset and scared, um, we might want to think about you know, not looking at that, right? Because the scriptures teach us, and this is Jesus talking, that our eye is the lamp that provides light for the body. When our eye is good, our whole body is filled with light. But when our eye is bad, our whole body is filled with darkness. And furthermore, if we think that the light, if and if the light that we think is light is actually dark, right? So if, it, if the thing that we think is good is actually bad, how deep is that darkness, right? And that is everywhere. People are calling good things bad and bad things good. And in the scriptures, it says, woe to them that call evil good and good evil. And so we have to really think about the purpose and what it, what we're looking at and what are they what are they touting as the greatest good is that something that goes against our catholic faith is it something that goes against what your parents would want you to do and if it is turn it off turn it off because the eye is how we receive information right we can hear it with our ears we can see it with our eyes but the eye is definitely the window to the soul and so um saint paul teaches us in philippians that the battle is for our mind and so if we want to if we want to think good thoughts, we need to look at good things. We need to listen to the good things. And then we need to think about good things. So finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence or if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Okay, so we're just going to read over some vocabulary right now about media um, and about our circle of grace. So the circle of grace is the love of uh, the love and goodness of God, which always surround me and all everyone else. So this is the love of God that's around us all the time. And as Christians, as baptized Catholics, we have that love and goodness and grace and um, holiness in us through the spirit of God. Okay, so remember how I said you saw something and it made you feel uncomfortable and you have to decide whether or not you want to, you know, tell your parents. Okay, so secrets. Y'all know what that is. That's something that you know somebody else doesn't know or that you've been asked to, to not tell. So, but there are safe secrets and there are unsafe secrets. You know, a safe secret is when keeping the secret does not hurt me or others. So an example of this is like your best friend is having a surprise birthday party and you keep the secret from her or him. That's a safe one because nobody's getting hurt. They're not gonna get hurt. Actually, it's a good thing. It's a very exciting thing because on the day of the party, then they will know that it was a surprise and how much everybody worked to keep it a secret to surprise them. And that's a good thing. But there are unsafe secrets as well. And an unsafe secret is when I think that if I keep this secret, somebody could get hurt, right? So um, it's a, you know, you know that a friend of yours is receiving text messages or images that are inappropriate that make them feel uncomfortable. And she or he asks you to keep that a secret. Well, those images can hurt them and they can hurt other people, the people that are sending them, right? So that it would be an unsafe secret. And even though you might be afraid of what your parents or your trusted adult might say about that, always, always tell secrets that, um, that if you kept them, somebody might get hurt. I know that's really, really hard, but I promise you that God sees the sacrifice. And if you get in trouble or you, you know, get in, you know, reprimanded or disciplined for telling the secret, God sees that. And that is a, that is beautiful to suffer for doing good and to suffer maybe a little bit for righteousness. I mean, that is one of those beatitudes that, you know, it's like, blessed are you when you are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Like, that's important. That's a good, good suffering. And that one's really hard for me in particular. I don't want people to be mad at me. I want people to like me. And so that one was really, really difficult when I was learning the beatitudes is blessed are you when you are persecuted and when they hate you for um, on, the, on account of me, Jesus says. When people hate you because you're doing the right thing and people hate you because uh, and persecute you because you're trying to live the godliness and truth, Jesus says, blessed are you and yours is the kingdom of heaven. And that is a particular kind of suffering, but it is also part of the Beatitudes and one of the most difficult ones to, uh, to live out. But always tell whenever you are asked to keep a secret and you know deep down that that's one that actually could hurt someone if you keep keep it to yourself. Okay, trust. 
we talked a lot about trust at the beginning. This is being able to count on someone to help me stay safe within my circle of grace, right? So trust is, is something that is earned. And so these are people, grown-ups, that you know that you feel safe around anyways and that you know are going to come through for you. Um, and so this is somebody that you can go tell when you don't feel safe and that they can help you to, to feel safe and to be safe. Like if there's a real thing that you're like, you're not safe, you know, somebody's hurting you or being, you know, or you know someone else might be unsafe. This is somebody that you can tell that then can bring safety back to you and to other people. And so this is a trusted adult, right? And so this is an adult that helps us to stay safe in our circle of grace and helps us respect others in their circle of grace. So it can be a parent, it can be a teacher, um, it could be you know, Father Reuben, it might be me or your PSR teacher, somebody that you know, that you trust and you feel safe around and you know that if you're not safe, that they can help, help, you, help keep you safe and help keep others safe. A boundary. A boundary is a border or a limit that we need to keep ourselves safe within our circle of grace. So if you know that you, when you um, follow somebody on, um, on Instagram and the stuff that they post is really negative all the time, it is fine to have the boundary to say, you know what, I don't think I want to you know, be connected with this person and to put them out of your connections. You aren't being mean. You're not judging anybody. You're not saying that they're, you know, going to go to hell or whatever. That's you are simply having a boundary that keeps you safe in your circle of grace. Okay. And so boundaries are good. Boundaries are good. It's kind of like when I was little, like, you know, I would, my dad was a minister, right? So I wasn't Catholic when I was little. I went to a different kind of Christian church. And uh, because my dad was a minister and was a pastor, you know, everybody always thought that, you know, I mean, I was his kid. So it's like, okay, come here, come give me a hug, come give me a kiss. Most of the time I didn't care, but there were a couple of people that were a little bit sketchy. And I was just like, I don't really want to hug you. I, I, you know, I'd be like, eh, you know, and that's okay. It's okay for me to feel like that. You don't have to hug everyone that asks you for a hug, Allison. And I remember my dad telling me that. And I was like, okay, I can say no. And if they get mad at me, that is their problem because it is a boundary. I don't feel comfortable and I don't have to let anybody touch me that I don't feel comfortable. And so you say no, and that's fine. And if they're mad, that's their problem, not yours. Okay, media. This is mass communication formats like music, TV, magazines, movies, videos, internet, computer games, books, advertisement, news, newspaper, radio, all of these things that bombard us all the time that provide education, information, entertainment, and advertising. Okay, so we are highly, highly influenced by all these things that we encounter every single day. And really, most of these uh, mass uh, media you know, outlets, they are controlled by a very, by, by a certain type of, you know, a certain group of people that want to like disseminate information from their perspective and say that it's good. And really what they're probably at the, at the root of it is they're trying to either sell their product or they're trying to get you hooked on some kind of, you know, diet, whatever it is. There's a, there's a, you got to look to the root. What are they trying to get from me? Are they trying to change my mind? Are they trying to educate me truly? Is their foundation of the, of the, of what they're saying? Is it based on what I have been taught to be true from my parents and from my church? Or does it go against what what I've been taught. And so inappropriate media are images were and words that are spoken or written that make you feel uncomfortable or scared, that they're disrespectful of people, or be something that your parent or another trusted adult would disapprove of. Okay. So if it's, it's, it's inappropriate, if it, like I tell my kids all the time, if you feel like you have to hide it, then you probably shouldn't be doing it. And I say that for myself as a grown up too. If I feel like I have to hide it, then I probably shouldn't be doing it. I have a drawer in my, um, in my bedroom where I've got chocolate, right? And so my kids all know about this drawer, but sometimes I go in there and I'm trying to like pretend like I'm not opening it. And so, I, you know, and I always get caught. Well, not always, but most of the time I do because they can hear that drawer. And so even I, when I'm opening the drawer and I'm like, I don't want people to know I'm in here getting this candy. I get a check and I'm like, if I feel like I'm high, if I, if I feel like I have to hide it, I probably shouldn't do it. 
So usually what happens when I get that check, I'm like, hey, y'all want some candy? And I, I'll share it. Although Sarah would probably tell you that I don't always share it and she'd be right because sometimes I just don't want to share my candy because it's mine. Okay, so inappropriate media is images and words that are spoken or written that make somebody feel uncomfortable or scared or they disrespect your circle of grace or somebody else or it's something that your parent or another trusted adult would disapprove of. So there are some rules about using the internet in a safe manner so that your boundaries are not violated. And boundaries are simply just like, it's like, it's like a wall that you put up to keep yourself safe. So never, ever, ever give out your personal information. I don't care if, I don't care. Don't ever say who you are, where you live, all of that. It's like, oh, I'm a nine-year-old girl that lives in South Dakota. Who are you? How old are you? Where do you live? You won't know that that person's nine years old, not unless you can actually see them on a camera. And even then, even then it could be a fake image, right? So never ever give out your personal information when you're online. Never send a picture or anything else to someone who requests it, right? So a picture, now now if it's your parents, like we, I send pictures to my husband and he sends pictures to me. And you know, if it's somebody that your parent knows and it's a friend, but if you don't know the person who's asking for you a picture or for like your address, you know, just, just don't do that. That's a boundary to keep yourself safe. Tell a trusted adult if someone sends you a picture or a message that makes you feel uncomfortable, or if you know your parents wouldn't approve, tell them, tell them. Because if you're unsafe and feeling unsafe, you've, it's important to ask somebody to help you to be safe. So go tell them when you, if, you, if that ever happens. Um, it's important that you're comfortable with the trusted adult, seeing that what you're writing or doing on the cell phone or your computer, or your tablet, or your gaming system. So. When, our, when I ask my kids to turn their screens so that I can see what they're, what they're doing online, that's important for them to be okay with that, right? And I say that for myself as an adult. If what I'm doing on my computer, I don't want anybody to see it. If I feel like I have to hide it, I probably shouldn't be doing it. So my husband has full access to my history, my browsing history, all of that, because I don't want there to be any kind of hint of something that's wrong. I want to see good things and things that help me to be a better mom and a better wife and a better Christian. That's the kind of stuff that I want to put into, my, into myself. And so I don't mind anybody just coming and looking at my screen. Now, sometimes my kids will hold me accountable too. Like if I'm on Facebook and I'm just scrolling, 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 and they're like, mom, are you on Facebook again? And I get a little irritated and I'm like, you know what? You're right. I shouldn't be on this. I've been on it. I've already looked. I haven't looked at anything, you know, like that or whatever. The most of the stuff I click on is stuff about, you know, politics or recipes or, you know, uh, articles about um, that my favorite Catholic speakers talk about, like Christopher West or Scott Hahn or, you know, these theologians that I like. And so I'll click on that and I'll read their stuff. So it's not like it's bad stuff, but after I've done that for about 30 minutes or 45 minutes, if I've got, and I'm not doing like, and I'm still scrolling and I still have dishes to wash, or I've got to go pick up somebody from school, or, you know, then I need to be looking at even the time that I'm spending on these things, right? So, um, so what I'm telling you, I also hold myself to that same standard. So if you're at a site where you feel like you should lie, or you wonder if what it says is true, and you're not in a safe place. If you're looking at something, you're like, oh man, I don't know if this is real or not. Uh, go find somebody and talk to them about it, okay? Um, and so there's so much out there that's not, um, that's not real. Um, they even have these things called deep fakes now, where they have what looks like famous people saying and doing certain things, and, and they're not. They're, it, it, they've taken, um, like an example of this is The Mandalorian. Okay, so my family, we just watched the, the, the Mandalorian episode, and hopefully all of you aren't going to be mad because there's some spoilers here. At the very end, Luke Skywalker is there, and now we know that Luke Skywalker, the guy who played him, is now in his 60s, so he's kind of an old guy, right? But in the Mandalorian that was just released, he looks like he's about 25 or 30 years old. He looks almost exactly like he did back in the 80s, in the 1980s. And I remember when he first came on the screen, I was like, whoa, like that's really good graphics, right? Like the, the CGI, the, the, um, and it looked, now when he started talking, you could tell that it wasn't real. 
but the more technology um, improves, the less and less we're going to be able to tell if stuff is real or not. So if you get to something and you're like, oh, man, that seems really uncomfortable. I'm a little bit, I don't even know if this is real or I feel like I should lie or hide the fact that I saw this. Go find somebody and talk to them about it so that they can help you. Okay. So these are the questions that you'll need to answer, you and your parents, uh, to, uh, to prove that you've done this training. Uh, these are in the Google Classroom on the instructions. So um, go ahead and answer these questions either in the public uh, comment section or in the private comment section. Um, and, um, and then I'll know that you've actually seen the video, that you've gone through the training, um, and that you and your parent, uh, parents or your mom or your dad, you guys are having some really, really good conversations about what it means to stay safe in our circle of grace and how media can influence um, our circle of grace for good and for bad. Okay, so let's go ahead and close in prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you, God, for always being with me and my circle of grace. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit who helps me to know what is good. Thank you for giving me people who care about me and want me to be safe. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Have a good day and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.